Oh. Because I attend a party. I attend the party uh, to my friend's house. Then the party. Okay, of course. Here. Okay, that's why you attend the party. Okay, now here, you remember the last time we discussed about relative clauses? Do you remember that? Yes. Remember that? Okay, for a while, teacher will still... Okay, before we will start, teacher will go to the bathroom for a while, okay? I need to peep because I have classes before you. So for a while, I need to go to the bathroom, okay? Just a minute here. You wait, okay. teacher Ann. Okay, 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 teacher is here. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So the last time, teacher is talking about uh, talking about relative pronoun. Okay, as a short review. Sorry, as a short review, teacher has relative clauses, which, who, that. Remember that. Okay, so for now, yeah, for now, teacher will show you about the two kinds of relative process. Okay, we have here. First, before I will show you in the YouTube, I will have I would like to discuss about relative process in defining and non-defining. Okay, so defining relative clauses are used to give essential information about the noun. This is about the noun, like. I've lost the book which you lent me. Okay. It defines which book you mean. The one which you lent me. It is the one which you lent me. Okay. This is the one which you lent me. Okay. That's it. It gives essential. Okay. What kind of book do you mean? The one which you lent me. So, which you lent me here is what we call defining relative clauses another how can i contact those men who help you to move house how can you contact to men who helped you to move the house okay it gives essential information defining which men we are talking about which men we are talking about Okay, so the following relative pronouns can be used 
in defining relative clauses. Okay, the following relative pronouns can be used in defining relative clauses. Which or that. This is four things. Okay, this is defining relative clauses. Which or that for things. Okay, who or that is for people. Okay, where of course it's for places. For places, when is for times, and whose is to indicate possession. Okay, here. Now, Keo. Okay, so this is what defining relative clauses. Okay, here now teacher will go to. I will erase first. Teacher will go to non defining relative classes. What is the non defining relative classes? What was those? Okay. Non defining relative classes. Okay. Classes are used to give extra information. They are usually separated from the main class with a comma. Okay. When we say non-defining, you can say it is non-defining to you if there is a comma. It is separated with a comma. Again, it is separated with a comma. The prime minister who has visited the city on three previous occasions will arrive here tomorrow. Okay, Who has visited the city? It's who? It's the prime minister. Okay. This is the difference between defining and non-defining. When we say non-defining, there is a comma after the subject. Okay. The documents are kept in the director's office. Director's office. Okay. Where they should remain all time. Where is where? It refers to where. The place, it's director's office. So this is what I mean, Kyo. Listen, Kyo. When I see defining, it doesn't have comma. No comma. No comma. Oh, comma. But when I see non-defining, non-defining, there is a comma. There is a comma for non-defining. Okay. You understand? Okay. So we have here, look at this as one example again, again, again. Prime Minister who has visited the city on three previous occasions. Okay. This is the relative clause introduced by relative pronoun who okay who has visited the city on three occasions who is that the prime minister there is a comma the documents are kept in the director's office look at you there is a comma after the director's office director's office here is a place so therefore the relative clause which is introduced by relative pronoun where referred to director's office. Clear, Kyo? Do you understand? Kyo, do you understand? Yes, I understand. Okay, here. Look at Kyo, boy, who has visited the city on three previous occasions. This is the relative clauses. Relative clauses, teacher. It is introduced by who? Who Kyo is, oh, sorry, who Kyo is, the who here is the relative pronoun. Introduce the relative clauses. Who has visited the city on three previous occasions? Here, look at this one. Where they should remain at all times. Where here, look at the word, where, this is, where is the relative pronoun that it takes with place. It's place. Let me see where. And it is introduced by a relative pronoun where. So where this should remain at all times. It is reference to where it's in the director's office. Do you understand, Kyo? Yeah. Do you understand, Teacher Anne? Do you understand me, Kyo boy? Do you understand me? I understand. Okay. So now, Kyo, I will let you show what is the difference between defining and non-defining in the YouTube so that it will not be boring for you. Okay. I will show you the video about defining and non-defining.
sir. A minute kayo. Okay, a minute. Oh, where is it? Why it you to me? Okay, here. Wait for a while, okay. <laughs> I can't see a screen. Oh, wait, wait for a while. Defining. Oh, it is a uh, defining relative classes because it's good if you can see something and you can see something in the YouTube because it will not be boring to you. I know it's very boring. Okay. Look at this one. Okay. I will be sharing this to you. So you can check also what is teacher Anne is trying to tell you. Okay, my God. In this lesson, you're going to learn about defining and non-defining clauses in English. What they are, the differences between them, and how to use them. Keep watching until the end where there'll be a short quiz to see how much you've learned. So let's get started. So let's start with what it was. A clause is a group of words containing a subject and a verb, which form a sentence or part of a sentence. It's loading here, oh my God. So an example could be, oh, I can't cook very well, but I make quite good pancakes. I can't cook very well is a clause. Okay, for, okay, I will repeat. See how much you've learned. Okay. So let's get started. So let's start with what, what is, is class? class? It's a group of words containing a subject and a verb, which form a sentence or part of a sentence. So an example could be, I can't cook very well, but I make quite good pancakes. I can't cook very well is a clause, and I make quite good pancakes is a clause too. They are main or independent clauses, that is, they are of equal importance and could each exist as a separate sentence, but we won't go into that today. Each clause has a subject, I, and a verb, here, cook and make, whereas a relative clause starts with a relative pronoun, either who, which, that, whose, where, when, whom and why. For example, okay. the man who called you is my dentist. Okay, can you see that here? Okay, what is class? It is a group of words containing subject. Okay, a group of words containing subject and a verb which form which form a sentence or a part of a sentence. Example, I can't cook. There is a verb, but I make quite good pancakes. Make these are the subjects. The one underlined here, KO, okay, no, sorry. The one underlined here, KO, this one, underlined by teacher, they are the subject. They are the subject. Yes, they are the subject. And this one, they are the verb. They are the verb. So when you say, because it is a group of words, group of words containing subject and a verb which form a sentence or a part of sentence. 
Okay. But now, since we are talking here about relative clauses, we are talking about relative clauses. So in here, relative clause, it starts with relative pronoun. Always remember, Cleo. When we say relative clause, it always starts start in the beginning. Who, which, that, whose, where, when, whom, and why. All of this relative pronoun is in the beginning of relative clauses. Do you understand? Do you understand, Kyo? Do you understand, Kyo? Kyo, did you hear me? Kyo, did you hear teacher Anne? Kyo? Kyo, did you hear me? Kyo, did you hear teacher Anne? Yes. Okay. So all of this, Kyo, look at Kyo. Who, which, that, whose, where, when, whom, and why. Oh, they are oh, relative oh. pronouns. And you can find them in the relative clauses like this. Oh, no. The man who called you is my dentist. Subject man who called you is my dentist. It refers to who. Who called you Ooh. is my dentist. It who is the man is a person. Okay, continue, Kaya. Continue listening. The TV which I oh, wait, wait. was is okay. every day. Oh, wait. There are two types of relative clause. Okay. Defining and non-defining. Okay, listen. So what is a defining relative clause? Defining relative clauses give us essential information that we need to understand what or who is being referred to. A defining relative clause usually comes immediately after the noun it describes. For example, the dentist who treated me is my uncle. The relative clause tells us which dentist we are talking about. It is essential information. If we removed the clause, we would not know which dentist we are talking about. And it comes immediately after the noun it describes. Here, the dentist. What they oh, are... Oh for example, immediately after the noun it describes. For example, the dentist who treated me is my uncle. The relative clause tells us which dentist we are talking about. Okay, so this one, Kayo, look at this one. This is what teacher Anne told you. This one is the relative clauses. What kind it's defining, okay? This one, who treated me, is the essential information. This is the essential information that describes the dentist. The dentist who is my uncle. The dentist who treated me. So it gives information who is this dentist. This dentist is not only my uncle. He is also the one who treated me. Do you understand, Kyo? Do you understand, Kyo? understand yeah so it gave essential information that this dentist is not only his uncle Kyo, is not only Kyo's uncle it is also the one who treated Kyo. it's the dentist okay very good next Kyo, continue sorry oh my god where is it we would uh -huh. not know which ah, you dentist will go? we are talking about. You will you will leave for a while? No. Okay, okay, continue. And it comes immediately after the noun it describes, here, the dentist. Whereas relative clauses that give us extra information are called non-defining relative clauses. For instance, my uncle is the dentist, he plays the same cricket club as you. We all know a dentist, it's my uncle. Who plays at the same cricket club as you does not tell us which dentist we are talking about. Okay, so this one, Kaya, sorry, okay, does not tell us dentist we are talking about. So my uncle is dentist. Okay, it's here. Sorry, it, it was covered. So this is non-defining information. The one written in green, this one, who play cricket club as you. This is only extra information. Like I will tell, Kyo is my student. Okay, Kyo is my student who play Roblox game. Okay, the one who play Roblox game is only extra information. But the end essential information is who is my student, which is it describes Kyo. 
extra information is the one who play Roblox. You understand? You understand, Kyo? Okay. Lesson here, continue. It just adds extra information. So what are the other differences between defining and non-defining relative clauses? First up, defining relative clauses are never separated from the rest of the sentence by commas. The dentist who treated me is my uncle has no commas. Whereas non-defining relative clauses must be separated from the rest of the sentence by commas. My uncle is a dentist, comma, who plays at the same cricket club as you. Defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses may both begin with these relative pro pronouns. Who, for people. The woman who lives next door is a doctor. This is essential information. Without the relative clause, we would not know which woman we were talking about. So it's a defining relative clause. Whereas my brother Tim, who lives in Scotland, is a doctor, is a non-defining relative clause because it is simply adding extra information. Notice the two commas in the middle sentence. Which for things? Brian works for companies computers. Here it is a defining relative clause. It is essential information, otherwise we do not know which company Brian works for. Whereas, Brian told me about his new job, comma, which he is not enjoying very much. This is adding extra information, so it's a non-defining relative clause. Notice the comma. Whose, instead of his, her or their, we usually use whose as a relative pronoun to indicate possession by people and animals. So in a defining clause, we could say, we met some people whose car had broken down, essential information to know who we met, or in a non-defining clause, Sam, whose car had broken down, was in a bad mood. This is simply extra information, so it's a non-defining clause. Where this is? In a defining clause, you could say, what is the name of the place where you went on holiday? This is essential information. Or, non-defining, Jane has just been to Oxford, where her dad lives. Okay, for a while, Kyo okay, here, here. Yes. In the okay. defining clause. Okay, look at this one. Okay, teacher, and get very cold today because I've got a favorite Kyo. So here we have defining. That's why teacher is wearing a jacket today. Teacher got a fever. That's why teacher wear a jacket. Okay, now here defining and non-defining. So again, so we have here. The woman, defining, look at the woman. The woman who lives next do door is a doctor. Okay. The woman who lives next door. Okay, the woman. The woman who lives next door is a doctor. It's for the people. I am talking here, who, Kyo? I am talking about the woman. Okay. Look at here, who. We will have to identify, we will have to differentiate who. My brother, Tim, okay, Kama, who lives in Scotland, is a doctor. Okay, there is a comma after the subject. This is non-defining. It gives extra information about Tim, who lives in Scotland. It's not directly said that who lives, who is Tim. Okay, next, which Brian, which works for a company, Brian, look at this one, works for a company which makes computers. Okay. This is for things which kill. Here, can you see which refers to the company? Here. Brian, for things, again, kill which kill. Look at this one, look at the computer. Which Brian told me about his new job. Brian told me about his new job, which he is not enjoying very much. Can you see? There is a comma. All you can observe in non-defining KO, there is a comma. There is a comma for non-defining. Next, whose. Look at here the word whose. Okay, can you see the word whose? When we see the word whose, Instead of his or her or their, 
we will use whose. Okay. People. We met some people whose car had broken down. This is defining. Who did you met? Some people whose car had broken down. Next. How about non-defining? Some whose car had broken down, comma, was in a bad mode. Some whose car had broken down was in a bad mood. Okay, look at this one. Where? For places. In a defining clause, you could say, okay, let's continue this one. Kayo, please try to listen. Please try to let your mind think. Defining don't have comma. Define non-defining. There is a comma after the after the Whoa. subject after the subject you please listen to teacher okay okay next then, year uh, after the subject i will erase now let's move on do you understand kyo please kyo please listen yes. to teacher okay understand okay Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why teacher is calling that? I forgot this is uh, oh. English. What? We usually use whose as a relative pronoun to indicate there. possession by people and animals. So in a defining clause, we could say, we met some people whose car had broken down. Essential information to know who we met. Or in a non-defining clause, Sam, whose car had broken down, was in a bad mood. This is simply adding extra information, so it's a non-defining clause. Where for places? In a defining clause you could say, what is the name of the place where you went on holiday? This is essential information. Or non-defining, Jane has just been to Oxford where her dad lives. Okay, next one. When, for times, I remember the day when I met you. Essential information so defining and additionally in defining relative clauses using when, the when can be omitted. So you could also say, so I remember the day I met you. And this picture was taken yesterday when it was raining. This is adding extra information so therefore it's a non-defining clause. Whom, for people as the object of a clause. This is mainly used in written English and is increasingly rare. For example, this is George whom you met last year. And in a non-defining clause, this morning I met Charles whom I hadn't seen for ages. Some relative pronouns can only be used in defining clauses. Why can only be used in a defining relative clause after the words the reason. So for example, the film was the reason why he became famous. And like when the relative pronoun why can be admitted in defining relative clauses. So you can also say the film was the reason he became famous. And you cannot use why in non-defining relative clauses. That can only be used in defining relative clauses to replace who, whom, or which. So you could say the picture which hangs on the wall, or also correct is the picture that hangs on the wall, or with who, the woman who he married, or the woman that he married. Or this is George whom you met last year, or this is George that you met last year. Equally correct. So you cannot use that in non-defining relative clauses. Next, who, which, or that can be omitted when they're the object of the clause. The medicine, which, or that, the doctor gave me, should be taken twice a day. Here the medicine is the object of the clause. The subject doing the action is the doctor. What did he give? The medicine, the okay. object of the clause. So here you can leave out which or that and just say the medicine the doctor gave me should be taken twice a day. 
whereas in non-defining clauses, you cannot leave out the relative pronoun. Both in defining and non-defining relative clauses, the relative pronoun can define the subject or the object of the verb. So firstly, in defining relative clauses, we have the picture which hangs on the wall is old. Here, the relative pronoun which describes the subject of the sentence, the picture. And here, the man who she married is Spanish, who is defining the object of the verb. In non-defining relative clauses, it's the same. In this sentence, the building, which is very old, needs repairing, which is defining the subject of the verb. And in this sentence, the boat owner, who we've just seen, loves people, who defines the object of the verb. Both defining and non Okay, with here. So look at here, Kayo, for this. This is defining and non-defining again. Look at, I, I want to hide my face so you can see because the screen is so uh, so full of writing. I will hide my face here. Okay, so we have here defining and non-defining. Relative pronoun can define the subject or the object of the verb. Look at here. Again, the relative pronoun can define the subject or the object of the verb. Okay. Here, look at the defining, the picture which hangs on the wall. The picture, the picture which hangs on the wall is old, okay? This is the subject, Kyo, look at this. This is picture is the subject, it refers to which? Because picture is a thing, right? Right, you yeah, boy? picture is a thing. Yeah, a picture is a thing. The building, okay, look what happened. There is a comma, this is non-defining. There is a comma, which is very old. Again, it refers to the building. Needs repairing, okay. The subject is building. Here, the man who she married is a Spanish. This is the object. Who she married. Okay, this is the object. The boat's owner, who's been just seen, loves meeting people. Look at there is a comma. Can you see that? Who here referred to the boat owner? Okay. Can you see that, Keo? This one, Keo. This case, okay. This case, Keo, is like here, it's just like. Look at this one. If you see defining, very simple. If you see non-defining, there is a comma. After the subject or after the object. Do you understand, Kyo? Do you understand, Kyo? Do you understand, Teacher Anne? I understand. Very good. Okay, I will erase first and let us continue. The woman who he married, okay. or the woman that I will he hide married. my face so or you can this see is George, or view that. whom you met last year, or this but is the George, is very that small. you met last year. Equally correct. So you cannot use that in non defining relative clauses. Next, who, which, or that can be omitted when they're the object of the clause. The medicine, which, or that the doctor gave me should be taken twice a day. Here the medicine is the object of the clause, the subject doing the action is the doctor. What did he give? The medicine, the object of the clause. So here you can leave out which or that and just say the medicine the doctor gave me should be taken twice a day. Whereas in non-defining clauses you cannot leave out the relative pronoun. Both in defining and non-defining relative clauses, the relative pronoun can define the subject or the object of the verb. So firstly, in defining relative clauses, we have the picture which hangs on the wall is old. Here, the relative pronoun which describes the subject of the sentence, the picture. And here, the man who she married is Spanish, who is defining the object of the verb. In non-defining relative clauses, it's the same. 
in this sentence, the building, which is very old, needs repairing, which is defining the subject of the verb. And in this sentence, the boat owner, who we've just seen, loves meeting people, who defines the object of the verb. For both defining and non-defining relative clauses, we always admit the object pronoun, her, him, it, etc., when we make a relative clause. So you could say, we know little about the woman that he married, and not, we know little about the woman that he married her. Or, this picture shows Bob's wife Lucy, who he married in 2019, and not, this picture shows Bob's wife Lucy, who he married her in 2019. In both defining and non-defining relative clauses, you usually have the preposition at the end of the clause. So it's the one which he is responsible for at work. In a defining clause, and Sue, who my mother worked with, has become a teacher. In formal English, in both defining and non-defining relative clauses, you sometimes have a preposition at the beginning of the clause, followed by which for thing or whom okay. for people. So, okay. Okay. Clauses, okay, okay, for a while. Could say okay, it's the I will stop it here. I will stop. Okay, 
Okay? Okay. Here. Okay. So I will continue. He was responsible at work and in non-defining relative clauses, Sue, with whom my mother worked, has become a teacher. Also in both defining and okay, non-defining relative while, clauses, little about the woman that he married and not we know little about the woman that he married her. Or this picture shows Bob's wife Lucy who he married in 2019 and not this picture shows Bob's wife Lucy who he married her in 2019. Okay, can you see Kea? We have another example for defining omit the object pronoun like her, him or it. You will not include. You will not include. We know little about the woman that he married. Okay. Not, you will not use this. We know little about the woman that he married her. Okay. You will have to omit. You will have to put it. Do not include it. Do not include it, Kayo. So you will have to omit. It means do not include it. So you hear. So when you say here, this picture shows Bob's wife, Lucy, who he married in 2019. This is correct. This is correct. And this one, this picture shows Bob's wife, Lucy, who he married him in 2019. It's wrong. Do not include or erase her, him, or it. Do not include it. Okay, Kayo, you understand? Okay, very good. Next one here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. I thought it was a slide. Sorry, Kayo. <laughs> because we have a slide, but our book, we are using a book which has no slide. That's why Teacher Anne is using a way in which we can view other things. We can learn other things. Oh, where is it? The verb. So firstly, in defining relative clauses, we have the picture which hangs on the wall is old. Here, the relative oh, pronoun fine. which. Yeah. For both defining about the woman that he married her. Okay, her is wrong. Or this picture shows Bob's wife, Lucy, who he married in 2019. And not this picture shows Bob's wife, Lucy, who, who he, he married, married her, her in 2019. In 2019. In both defining and non-defining relative clauses, you usually have the preposition at the end of the clause. So it's the one which he is responsible for at work. In a defining clause and Sue, who my mother worked with, has become a teacher. In formal English, in both defining... Okay, wait, wait for a while. Okay, here. Okay, teacher, one thing to discuss this. Okay clause and Sue who my mother worked with has become a teacher. In formal English in, in both defining and non-defining relative clauses you sometimes have a preposition at the beginning of the clause followed by which for things or whom for people. So in defining relative clauses you could say it's the one for which he was responsible at work and in non-defining relative clauses, Sue, with whom my mother worked, has become a teacher. Also, in both defining and non-defining relative clauses, we cannot use that after a preposition in a relative clause. So you would say, the room in which the meeting was held was too small, and not the room in that the meeting was held was too small. Okay, look at this one. We have here in defining KO, look at this one. In this one, defining, we cannot use that after a preposition in a relative clause. Look at this one. The room in which the meeting was held was too small. It's too small. Okay. You cannot say this is correct. Actually, this is correct, KO boy. Let's wait for a while. Teacher is trying. Okay. This is correct. The room in which, okay, this is preposition in preposition where the meeting was held was too small this is correct but this is not correct you cannot say the room in preposition that you should not put that after the preposition this is wrong okay wrong 
the meeting was held was too small. So the right thing to do or the right grammar is the room in which the meeting was held was too small. Do not say the room in that the meeting was held was too small. Okay, you understand? You understand, Kyo? Yeah, very simple. Okay, next. Go, Kyo. Okay, I will read it. I will continue. Oh, where is it? I will erase first. <laughs> Teacher Anne is hey, here. A minute, Kyo. Okay. And finally, defining relative clauses are Kayo, used I will in just writing go to the eye for a while. speaking, whereas... Kayo, I will go to the bathroom for a while. I want to pip, okay? Just a minute. Non-defining relative clauses are more common in writing than in speaking. So now it's your turn. Choose the correct sentence between the two sentences given. Pause the video if you need to and think about the reasons why this is the case. One. Have you ever been back to the town that you were born in? Notice the comma before the relative pronoun. Or, have you ever been back to the town you were born in? With no commas. The second sentence is correct. This is essential information. Otherwise, you would not know which town you are talking about. So it's a defining relative clause and therefore has no commas. Two. My left ankle, which I broke last winter, is still giving me trouble. Notice in the first sentence there are no commas, and in the second there are. The correct sentence is the second one with the commas. Here the clause, which I broke last winter, is extra information and not essential to understanding the sentence. Therefore, it is a non-defining relative clause and needs commas. Three, the friend that I want to introduce you to is away this weekend or the friend that I want to introduce you to her is away this weekend. Write your answer down below in the comment section and explain why this is the correct answer. And I promise to get back to you with feedback on how you've done. That's it for now. I hope you feel more confident using defining and non-defining clauses in English. Remember to like this video if you found it useful, share it with your friends and colleagues learning English, they'll thank you for it, and don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel, Oxford English Now, for more free English language videos. So take care, that's it for now, and see you very soon. Bye-bye. Derecha hanaha. Dapat matiba yung resistensya laban sa sakit. Kaya ang gatas ng anak ko, Bear Brand. Ang nutrients, di basta-basta. Tibay resistensya nutrients. Ang vitamin C, di tulad ng iba. 100% tulong para sa matibay na immunity. Talaga namang pinag-aralan at napatunayan. Patibayin ng resistensya. Mag Bear Brand araw-araw. Biggest Bear Brand. Save up to 120 pesos. For just $67, you can make as many videos as you want, and you never need to pick up a camera or use any fancy editing software. With Doodly, you drag, you drop, you tweak some settings, and boom, video done. It'll take you just a few minutes. So let's hear from the Doodly creator, Brad, to see why Doodly is so easy to use and why you should grab this offer right now. Hi, I'm Brad Callen, and in this video, I'm going to show you how anyone can quickly and easily create Doodle videos, just like the one you're watching right now, using Doodly, our drag and drop Doodle software that allows anyone, regardless of tech skills, to create highly engaging professional Doodle videos in a matter of minutes. Because Doodle videos are fun and engaging, they can get you more clicks, likes, shares, and most importantly, sales than any other type of video, which is why Doodly is now the video tool of choice for over 150,000 businesses all over the world in virtually every industry and profession that you can imagine. Doodle videos are perfect for marketing, teaching, fundraising, personal use, and even inspiring others. After all, one of the keys to a successful video is to capture your audience's attention and keep it for an extended period of time. And since you're still watching this video, you already know how great Doodle videos are at doing just that. 
Not only are Doodle videos incredibly captivating, but research shows that they massively boost learning and memory retention. As a result, viewers really absorb your message, making your videos that much more impactful. And even better, Doodle videos can make complex or boring subjects fun and easy to understand. So let me quickly show you how simple and easy Doodly makes it to create an interesting professional video. All right, here I am inside the Doodly software, which is available for Mac and. Okay, Kia. Okay, so we are done with that. We are already in the Google, the Google, Google. It's the Google teacher and Google. Okay, so these are those are Kia actually comprise the defining and defining. So I will still have one more video. A very short review about defining and undefining. Defining and non-defining relative clause. At least we can learn. Okay, we can learn more about that relative clause. Okay, on uh, Monday, Kyo, tomorrow we will have to tell. Okay, we will have a quiz or uh, exercises for this. Teacher will give you exercises about this. Or this one. Okay. I would like to introduce this. Hello, I'm Teacher Robin. Welcome to another live streaming class. Today, we're going to be talking about Defining, defining versus, versus non-defining non relative clauses. So if you okay. want to learn more about this topic, keep watching. And if you want to participate during the class, if you have a question or something you want to add, you can write in the comments, okay? And I'll be checking your comments throughout the class. So let's get started with our topic for today. First, let's define what is a relative clause, okay? A relative clause adds relatively important information about the subject or object of the sentence. It is usually placed immediately after the noun to which uh, they refer, and it is introduced by a relative pronoun or adverb. Okay, so we'll start with defining relative clauses. Okay, what does a defining relative clause mean? A defining relative clause provides information that is indispensable, essential to identify the subject or object of the sentence. Okay, you need this information in the sentence. Without this clause, the sentence completely changes its meaning. Okay, it always comes immediately after the subject or the object and is introduced by a relative pronoun. All right, so let's see some examples. Let's start with the relative clause of the subject. So if the subject is a person, then we use the relative clauses who or that. If the subject is a thing, we can use the relative clauses which or also that. Okay, for example, the man who is talking to Anne is my math teacher. The book, which was published last year, would be perfect for your exam. So can you see how this information within the clause is essential? Because here, we don't know which man the person is talking about unless we say who is talking to Anne. Otherwise, it could be any man, we don't know. And the same goes for the book the book which was published last year. So this gives you specific information that is essential to understand the rest of the sentence. Okay, so what if the relative clause is of the object, okay? So if the person is the object, if the object is a person, then we use who, whom, or that. If it is a thing, we use which or that. For example, the girl who you met this morning is my, my cousin. cousin. The book, which I am reading, is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. wonderful. Okay, so here we have which, so followed by an object. That is why we need to use this, uh, this relative clause. Okay, now let's move on to possessive relative clause. Okay, in the possessive, we use the relative clause whose. Okay, note W-H-O-S-E. Okay, Kyo, -E. okay, we are only until defining and non-defining. We are not yet on the possessive relative clause. We are not yet talking about who, whose. Whose is a possessive relative clause. It's relative, it means it's your possession. Whose, uh, I have a friend whose dog. So it means 
the owner of the dog is the friend. Okay. We are not yet touching that one. We are only until defining a non-defining cross. Okay, Kia? Okay. Yes. Okay. So we are still in, in undefining class. Okay. So uh let's go back here to our topic. Okay. So we have here again, we are only talking defining and non-defining class. Okay. So here after that one, on the next day on Wednesday, we are going to talk conditional forms. What are the conditional forms? But tomorrow, teacher will give some quiz, some exercise for you to answer about relative noun, relative clauses. Okay? I will give exercise for you to answer on relative noun and relative clauses. Okay, Kia? Gets? You understand, teacher? Yes, I understand. Okay, very so, very. Very silent. Do you understand, Kia? Yes, I understand. <laughs> That's it. So make it loud and clear. Yes, teacher, I understand it. Very good. So for now, Kia, teacher and don't have time. We started early. So of course, we have to finish early. Okay. We started five minutes earlier, right? So of course, okay. If you have questions, Kayo, tomorrow we will have to do a short review and then after exercise, we will have a test. A test tomorrow about relative classes. Okay, Kayo, you understand, Teacher Ann? Okay. Okay. For now, Teacher Ann will say goodbye and I will be seeing you tomorrow again. Okay? Bye-bye, Kayo, bye. Bye, Teacher. Okay.